in third. Then it's Olivia's Choice, now fourth, followed by Westward Breeze, and Travel Smart is at the back of the field. Inner Beauty speeds clear and opens up a three-length advantage. Palio's Princess will track from second, another two and a half to Cornelia Fort, racing in third with a half mile to travel. Westward Breeze, Travel Smart, and Olivia's Choice now at the back. It's inner beauty into the far turn, leading by almost two to Palio's Princess second. Cornelia Ford has been third throughout. Travel Smart gets a nudge in fourth, five lengths off the lead, two clear of Westward Breeze and Olivia's Choice. Inner beauty maintaining the lead of a length. Palio's Princess moving in from second. These two have dominated thus far. Cornelia Fort, Travel Smart is on the outside. They're at the top of the stretch. And inner beauty digging in a length and a half. Palio's Princess trying to get a little bit closer, as is Cornelia Fort. Very honest along the rail, a 16th to go. Cornelia Fort, inner beauty between, and Palio's Princess on the outside. Palio's Princess just in front on the rail. Cornelia Fort, photo finish. It's too close to call. Very, very close between Palio's Princess and Cornelia Fort. That one could go either way. Inner beauty and travel smart in a show photo behind them. Was in. And they're off. Crazy Hot is very fast from the outside, dueling with Conquest Celsius, but Conquest Celsius now speeds clear by two. Fiamina came away in good order third, but is suddenly four lengths off the speedy Conquest Celsius. And now Conquest Celsius and Crazy Hot, Crazy Hot goes by, and these two have put eight lengths on Love Me Like a Fool, who takes third. Fiamina is racing fourth, followed by High Flying Gracie as they pass the quarter pole and turn for home a long way back to stay quiet and thirsty for love as Crazy Hot smokes home. Eight length lead. What a debut for Crazy Hot who passes the 16th pole all alone. Crazy Hot by double digits. Second goes to Fia Mina who picked it up late. High Flying Gracie third. Conquest Celsius and stay quiet. Running time, 52.44 seconds. The favorite to the outside. They're in the gate. And they're off. Founders Day bounces out right on top. Aloha Kitten. And in between them, Angel Nadeshiko. Here's Ever Smart on the outside now taking third as Founders Day, who broke on top, is settling in the fourth spot. The trailer is Symphony Perfect. It's Aloha Kitten and Angel Nadeshiko 1 2 into the first turn. Ever Smart comfortable just behind them in third. And Founders Day in the yellow is now headstrong after being taken back and in a tight spot along the rail. Very tight. Another two back to Symphony Perfect. They swing onto the backstretch behind Aloha Kitten, who just cruises through the first couple of furlongs and now has it by two and a half, three lengths, letting it out a notch on the backstretch. Angel Nadashiko in second. There's a little room for Founders Day now on the inside. Ever Smart tightly held past the half mile pole in the clear and now moving right after the front runner. Aloha Kitten leads, but here comes Ever Smart now with a bold move to challenge into the far turn as they start to sprint. Angel Nadashiko, Founders Day drops out of it. Symphony Perfect is next. Aloha Kitten on the inside. Ever smart ahead away second. Two more back to Angel Nadashiko trying to come back for more as the field turns for home. Ever smart traveling beautifully throughout is up to take the lead from Aloha Kitten on the far outside. Symphony Perfect is kicking into high gear and Angel Nadashiko is currently second. A 16th to go. Ever smart. Symphony Perfect on the outside. Ever smart a length. Symphony Perfect surging. Symphony Perfect got up in the shadow of the wire. Ever smart second, Angel Nadashiko third.
Butler to the outside. And they're off. Buffett, Brazen Bull has plenty of speed and more tequila on the outside. More tequila is quickest as they pass the six for a long pole. Opening up a length and a half, Brazen Bull, Ziwa Tanejo in between horses, and Buffett is now fourth, three lengths off the lead. The two trailers, Broadway Unions and Big Hat Willie at the back. More tequila clears off to lead by three. Brazen Bull is in second. At the rail, Broadway Unions now claims third, inching up, now taking the second spot as they head toward the 3 8 pole. Big Hat Willie in the orange colors pushed along with four to make up, followed by Buffett and Ziwa Tanejo. It's more tequila, a length and a half with five sixteenths of a mile to go. Brazen Bull back clearly into second, and then comes Broadway Unions third. Big Hat Willie will attempt to rally on the outside as the field turns for home. More tequila, four-length lead. Big Hat Willie on the far outside. Broadway Unions at the rail. And Brazen Bull in between, coming to the 16th pole. And it's more tequila by five. Big Hat Willie will complete the exacta, but no match for more tequila, who cruises all the way to score by four and a half. Big Hat Willie second best, Broadway Unions and Brazen Bull. They're in the gate. And they're off. Ruby Nell sprints out of the gate, opens up two in the first few jumps. Lulu, lemon drop up close. Strikingly, Annie's Joy on the outside, trying to be restrained, but tugging up to be a joint second. Lulu, lemon drop drops off the pace. Sakura Flavor is seven lengths off the lead. Then Luminiferous racing two in front of Rockin' to the Boss and another four back to Galamine. Past a six for a long pole, and it's strikingly in front. Leading the way, opening up two and a half lengths on Annie's Joy in second. They're followed at the rail by Ruby Nell, who would like to be a little closer, under snug restraint from Ramon Vasquez at this stage. Lulu Lemon Drop races in fourth comfortably. A gap of five to the next flight, headed by Luminiferous on the outside of Sakura Flavor. Then two more to rock into the boss, and at the back of the field remains Galamain into the far turn, and it's strikingly leading by a length. Ruby Nell having some traffic issues at this stage. Annie's Joy reclaims second. Lulu Lemon Drop fourth, three lengths off the lead, coming to the quarter pole as Ruby Nell continues to look for room behind strikingly. Gets it now, strikingly in front. Ruby Nell in between. Annie's Joy on the outside. Lulu Lemon Drop Luminiferous has surfaced on the back of the field and Sakura Flavor at the fence. They're a furlong out. And Ruby Nell with some breathing room has collared strikingly at the rail. It's Sakura Flavor, but Ruby Nell pulls clear late. And it's going to be Ruby Nell. Ruby Nell wins it by two. Sakura Flavor was second. Tight photo for third between Strikingly and Luminiferous. Annie's Joy was fifth. Artab Keen to the outside. And they're off. Pray for our country is going straight to the front, joined by Apple Warrior with the red sleeves and down at the rail, My Amigo. And My Amigo now challenging Pray for our country for the early lead. Artab Keen is racing in fourth, about two and a half or so off the pace. Then slow starting Liddell, who tries to get into the race, only five off them. 10th Street Dawn is right next to him, and two more to King Heat. My Amigo heads toward the 3-8th pole in front by a length, 
Pray for Our Country is in second. A length and a half, Apple Warrior third. 10th Street, Don takes fourth within three of the pacemaker as they pass the three furlong marker. Then comes Liddell, who's down at the rail. Artab Keen is now backing out of it and another length to King Heat. A quarter of a mile to go. And it's my amigo 10th Street Don, though, with this sustained bid and under very confident handling. Kyle Frey just sitting still as 10th Street Don puts away my amigo and all the rest pouring it on. Five length lead and no one's getting anywhere near 10th Street Don this afternoon. He'll be posing for pictures shortly. And it is 10th Street Don. Dawn by 10 lengths coming toward the wire, and it will be more when the smoke clears. 10th Street Dawn by a block. Pray for our country, hold second. My amigo, then King Heat and Apple Warrior. The favorite big summer will be the last one to load. And they're off in the Miz direction. An Elm Drive, swift out of the gate. Freedom Flyer has some early speed, and Very Scary comes away in third. Then it's Canoodling racing in fourth, followed at the rail by Honey Pants. Big Summer broke well, but is allowed to relax. Six lengths off the leaders, and two more to Una Chiquitita. Down the hill and Freedom Flyer has the lead now. Three quarters of a length to Elm Drive in second. Then Canoodling followed by Very Scary in fourth. Honey Pants is fifth followed by Big Summer on the outside. Now inching up and two more to Una Chiquitita. They're approaching the quarter pole with Freedom Flyer. Elm Drive comes back for more. Canoodling in third. Now Big Summer launching a wide bid on the outside of Very Scary. And Big Summer picking up solid momentum while five wide. They're at the top of the stretch. And Big Summer and Elm Drive. Elm Drive goes on very willingly. Big Summer starts to chase in second. And Honey Pants on the far outside. But it's Elm Drive. Very strong past the 16th pole. A three-length lead over Honey Pants. And it's going to be Elm Drive. A Decisive winner of the Miz Direction. Honey Pants was second. Big Summer finished third. It's a photo for fourth and fifth of Phil D'Amato Exacta in the Miz Direction. They're in the gate, and they're off. It was an even start, and then self-taught took up shortly thereafter. Time to Zoom is sprinting clear in the early stages. Economical and Who's Candy side by side. Strike that, moving up outside of that pair, and there's only about three lengths off the speed. It's a gap of four, back to Joker Boy by himself, and self-taught is far, far behind. Past the half-mile pole, Time to Zoom leads by a length and a half, Who's candy at the rail? Economical between and strike that three deep. A gap of six now. Joker boy has to pick it up and four more to self-taught. They have less than three furlongs to run and it's time to zoom who's been there throughout. Strike that moving up very easily on the outside to engage and Joker boy is starting to roll from the back of the field. Who's candy at the rail? Economical loses ground. They are at the top of the stretch and strike that on the outside and a tough who's candy. These two are head and head. Three more lengths to Joker boy. Self-taught has surfaced from way out of it. Now strike that puts away who's candy at the 16th pole and pulls clear on the Outside, self taught is flying. He'll just complete the exacta behind. Strike that. Strike that one by two. Self taught finished with a flourish. Joker boy, then between economical and who's candy. in the gate and they're off 
It's a fast beginning for Seven Charms, who sprints up on the inside of Durante, who's prominent as well. 911 Turbo, Rosenquist, Crew Dragon in the orange colors is down at the rail. Lottery pick just behind this group, followed by Stotland. It's another two back to Flint Stroll, followed by Half Barber Bingy, an oncoming at the back of the field. Around the first turn, less than six furlongs to run. And it's seven charms taken strongly in hand. And as a result, both Crew Dragon and Rosenquist go right by him. Vasquez decides to sit on seven charms, two off that new battle up top as they swing on to the back stretch. Then it's Durante racing on the outside of Lottery Pick, who's comfortable, seven lengths off the lead. Another length back to 9-11 Turbo. Flint Stroll follows them in the yellow colors on the inside of Stotland. Then it's three back to half Barber Bingy and oncoming. Crew Dragon now opens up two on Rosenquist, and it's a gap of about six to the next flight. Seven charms along the inside of Durante, and just behind them, 911 Turbo. Lottery pick is next. Then Stotland in the light blue, launching a very wide bid. Flint Stroll, top of the stretch, and Crew Dragon with a two length lead. Seven charms coming after him, as is 911 Turbo, and Lottery pick storming in between rivals. Lottery pick between horses and 911 Turbo. Oh, a lot of checking and shuffling in the late stages as 911 Turbo. We'll get there first. Half Barber Bingy flew late to get second. Then it was Lottery Pick in third. Behind them between Oncoming and Crew Dragon and Seven Charms had a ton of late trouble.
the racetrack can be and is a beautiful place. And I'm not talking about the majestic San Gabriel Mountains behind the racetrack here at San Diego. I'm talking about the people that come to the track, the horse players, the gamblers, the racing fans, the group sales people that come out basically knowing nothing about horse racing. The people is what makes the racetrack such a beautiful place. And back in the day when SoFi Stadium was known as Hollywood Park, I would go out there on a daily basis trying to grind out a living, playing the horses. And of course, back then you'd see a lot more people on track and you'd see a lot of people who you kind of recognize but you didn't really acknowledge them, maybe a little tip of the head or something like that. But you never really talked to them or knew much about their background, which is really what makes the racetrack such a beautiful place. Well, fast forward to earlier this year, and lo and behold, one of the people that I saw almost on a daily basis at Hollywood Park turns out to be an actor. He was the helicopter uh, door gunner in the movie Full Metal Jacket. He's been a horse player his whole life. His name, Tim Colcheri. Tim, welcome to the seminar. Happy Sunday. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's, gr it's great to have you here, Tim. And we didn't know each other back then, like I said, but we bumped past many, many <laughs> times. You were an actor. I should have figured it out because we were in Southern California. We were at Hollywood Park, the uh, the home for many actors. Yeah. What got you involved in this beautiful sport of ours before we talk about Full Metal Jacket? Well, I was raised in Arizona and I never went to the horse track at all. If I did, it was uh, to get the 40 cent show bet <laughs> to get a beer. <laughs> and my best friend, I, I had $20 left from my GI Bill from being in the Marines. To, and he said, bet it all on my horse to win. I said, don't bet it to show. This was in Arizona yeah, or California? Yeah, paradise. Okay, all right. And his name was Corner Pocket. And all of a sudden, he got up and this corner and Corner Pocket's trailing the field. I looked at him and all of a sudden, he went, come on, Corner Pocket. Here comes Corner Pocket. <laughs> he comes flying and all of a sudden, he wins. And I'm holding the horse. And I go, I like this horse racing. How much did he get for your 20 I don't bucks? even know. I just was so excited. <laughs> now, you moved over to California to become an actor. Did you go to Hollywood Park, like I said, I pretty much on a regular basis? I saw basis? you all the time. Uh, I, I, I actually... Well, after the Marines, I tried playing professional golf for a few years, and then I cut a tendon, became an airline flight attendant for Braniff Airlines. I got You're based, dating yourself. I am old. Got based in L.A., <laughs> and I didn't even want to be an actor. Guy kept telling me, tell me you got to kind of come to my class. And I said, I'm not that kind of guy. And uh, I tried it, and they said, you're good at it. I go, I'm good at acting? And I gave it a shot, and I started doing some commercials. I wanted to do films, and nobody wanted to hire me because I didn't. I haven't done any films. But the one person kind of noticed me, and the next person noticed me, and then, and then I sent a tape to Stanley Kubrick, and out of thousands of tapes, three years of casting. You didn't know Stanley personally. <laughs> <laughs> I knew who he was. I, if I got one word in that movie, I was going to be excited. And but Stanley basically told you that you were going to have a leading role. He gave me the drill instructor role. Correct, correct. For, for eight, like seven or eight months. Now, let's take a look at the graphic of you in the movie, and ironically, also, the letter that Stanley Kubrick delivered to your house. First, let's talk about, oh. that's obviously you in the movie, right? Yeah, you were the me. helicopter door, door gunner. <laughs> get some was obviously the favorite, uh, you know, the most I, famous if line. If you want to get in my passwords, it's easy. <laughs> get some. And then on the right, although it's difficult to read, we can see on the bottom, it's actually signed by Stanley Kubrick. Yeah. It was his letter to you telling you that you were no longer going to be part of the leading role, but he did have a special spot for you in the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it was a hard thing to swallow, but then I got excited, and, and I'm proud I got to finally play the role. The, the door gunner became a really memorable scene, you know. I shot 6,000 rounds for that one scene. The other two actors were not even in the helicopter. Stanley changed the dialogue so many times that the night before I'd memorized all this dialogue, he said, you gave him the wrong dialogue to memorize. <laughs> I thought, man, I, maybe he's trying to make me crazy to play the crazy door gunner. Sure, you know? sure. I'm thinking, Where was that filmed? In Tim? London. No kidding. We filmed that in London, and... Uh, how do you do an eight degree weather Vietnam film, you know? Sure, sure. So, but it was exciting. And I've done 60 films since then. And it's, we've always seen each other. You, you hit it right on the head at the beginning. We see these people that they're just like other people. They could be billionaires. They could be a plumber. They're here to enjoy. And I love horse racing. I'm so proud to be here. That's the beautiful thing about the racetrack, right? We're all in this together. We're competing against each other paramutually, but we all have stories. Like you said, from a millionaire to a person rubbing two nickels together, yeah. we're all in the same arena. We're all at the same yeah. racetrack. Betting online now has kind of minimized that, but back in the day, it was so much fun. There were so many, I used to hear so many, I remember one guy go, hey, Johnny, you got 10 bucks to come borrow? He goes, huh? He got 20 bucks to come borrow? I heard you the first time. <laughs> You know, there were so many funny things you'd hear at the track and, and the personalities. But when it comes down to it, thoroughbred race horse, horse racing is very similar to acting. Your executive producer is the owner. The director is the trainer. Yep. The jockey is always talking about it's the horse and the actor is always saying it's the role. And, the, and they're very similar to that fact. You get a good role and the door gunner role is a good role. 
a good horse can make you look pretty good too. But there's still talent between both of those. Tim, you alluded to it. There's going to be a documentary on on basically your life as an actor and also your role in Full Metal Jacket. Talk to us about that if you will. Yeah, it's exciting. You know, excited. Somebody wants to talk about my life, but uh, <laughs> is it going to include horse racing? I hope. You know, I'm I'm thinking about doing that. Of course, we'll please talk, do. Can we talk about that afterwards? Sure, please do. I would like to. Yeah. I, I know that Mark Ralston, who was in Departed and Shawshank Redemption, and he's in, in the next Star Wars. We're very close friends. Michael Beans, my very best friend, he was in Aliens. What happened when Stanley Kubrick sequestered me from all the other actors because I was the menacing drill instructor? Michael lived above me, and I became friends with all the Alien crew. I know it's really weird. And we're still <laughs> friends to this day, so they've been auditioning them or, or, or showing them, and they're in the uh, the, the uh, documentary. And um, I, I want to show what, I, what I'm like outside that movie. So I would love to maybe come here and, and do that. Let's get all those guys to come out to the Great Race Place and have a fun afternoon would playing the ponies, right? That would be great. We're just getting warmed up. We're talking to Tim Cochere. We're going to find out who he likes on today's eight race card, plus continue to talk to him about his acting career. But before we do any of that, let's toss the microphone over to track announcer Frank Miramani and get the early changes on today's Sunday's card here at the Great Race Place. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Santa Anita Park. The track is fast and the turf firm with the rail out 20 feet on the turf course. Here are the changes. In the first, start of the early pick five, overweights, one plus one, four plus two, six plus two, eight plus two. In the second scratch, two Chickasaw and four Mongolian four. Two and four are out. No place or show wagering in the second. In the third race, no changes. We do start the Rainbow Six with 171,000 plus in the carryover. In the fourth, number two, Chicks Dig It, five pounds over. Scratch seven, Rock and Rye, and with that scratch, no high five. Fifth race, scratch five, Shady Appeal, and the program scratch of eight, Spot Doro. Overweights three and nine, each carry one pound overweight. The sixth is the Desert Code with no program changes. The seventh begins the Golden Hour Pick Four, no changes. And in the eighth, beginning of the Golden Hour Double, scratch three, Power Surge, and seven, Havana Angel. Three and seven out of the eighth. Those are the changes on today's card. Enjoy your day here at Santa Anita Park, where they will be at the gate for the opener in 58 minutes at 1 p.m. Let's go back to Quigley's Corner. Tom's special guest today is Tim Colcheri. Welcome back. We're talking horses with Tim Colcheri. He was the helicopter gun runner, uh, door gun runner, I should say, in uh, Gun Runner on My Mind, Tim. That's, That's the famous stallion, right? I can't get that out of, <laughs> One of my, my mind. One of my best ones. One track mind, a horse gun. <laughs> so anyway, the uh, gun runner in the helicopter in the movie Full Metal Jacket. It's our pleasure to have him today. As you heard maybe in the opening, he was born and raised in Arizona and offset while we were listening to Frank give us the changes. You told me an interesting story. You were a state high school champion wrestler at the 98 pound division. That was many moons ago. <laughs> yeah. But you also knew trainer Eric Krujak, who grew up in uh, Arizona and also was a wrestler as well. Yeah, that's right. We knew each other back when we were wrestling, and uh, he was like 165. He played linebacker. He was a lot bigger, tougher. But played we, at Arizona we, State. We, for we Frank knew Kush. each other from back then. Yeah, we knew those and fraternity brothers too. And I'm always rooting for Eric. Uh, uh, the, the chosen Ron, the horse yes. that he has been. Win I saw it when his first race. I said, "Man, Eric, you got a good one." I've probably been in more winning photos uh, of any trainer I know is with Eric. He's an easy guy to root for. That's for sure, Tim. Now, a question for you: What type of handicapper are you? I mean, you really want to talk about horse racing? Yeah. And of course, you went to the races on a daily basis. Are you just kind of a meat and potatoes guy that buys the racing? 
form? Do you oh, watch a lot I, of race I'm, replays? I'm a really big buyer. I go the best last buyer, okay. the best buyer of the race, the speed. I'm not into the weights too much. You know, I see a jockey who gets hot. I'll, I'll make of sure. Course. A lot of things that you have to take into consideration. But, but it, it comes down to it, I like horses moving up rather than coming down. I have everybody has their staff. I love a f- first time on the turf stretching out. <laughs> you know, when you have that kind of stuff. And, uh, and then you have to learn that, okay, you, even though you go that way all the time, this 10 percent might not be the time to go that way and be a smart enough to make that choice. Sounds like you're a contrarian. You like to zig when everybody else is zagging, right? There's even the zigzag thing, too, where the horse goes eighth and sixth and then back to four. I write that down. That's an important – you don't see that very often. Well, let's kind of roll up our sleeves, Tim, and take a look at today's sure. eight, eight race cards, uh, starting in race number one. Race number one, of course, begins the popular 50-cent early pick five. We've also got a super high five carryover of $9,000 in race one. In race one, we're sprinting six furlongs in the flat turf course. Maiden special weights, fillies and mares, the turf rail stood air at 20 feet. We've got a full field of nine the original morning line favorite of the current betting choice at eight to five is number four kissed by fire from the peter urton barn three to one on the morning line uh mike smith is in the saddle give us your thoughts on race one tim that was my first pick you know he's got speed and uh they must have thought really high of him because they stuck him in a grade one race right after his first one and that buyer 66 is right up there and that was when he was a two-year-old so now she's going to be a three and that's going to be maturing to, to that movie that's going to move up and saying that, this is a tough race. Really good race to kick it off. It's a hard one. I, as much as I like that horse, I can't see him. You know, there's so many other horses that can win. You do like, though, too, Irish Rose as we're looking at the graphic. You kind of give her a little bit of love, too. Well, Neil Drysdale, he takes his time with his horses, you know, and, and this horse ran on the turf. I don't know what happened to it last time. It, it was supposed to run a lot better. That first race was a really good race. And when it moved, it was favored, and it just didn't do anything. And it got bumped. So... You know, if it runs back to the first race, that horse could be tough, too. Tim, you're a busy guy with your acting career and doing other things as well, including the documentary that's that's upcoming to basically uh, review your life. Yeah. What is it about horse racing that gives you that escape? Obviously, you know, handicapping well, is a time consuming type of endeavor. Yeah. What is it that you like about handicapping and playing the horses so much? Gosh, it's, it's so it's a, it's addictive. I can't wait to f- figure out what they're going to do. And I have to watch it. I can't bet a race that I'm not watching. You know, I, I, I like the sound effects. So I wish they could do that. They've got now the visual. Put some sound on them, too, with the horses. You know, Just, you hear that's that. why we come to the track. Oh, you don't such, hear that in the sports book. No, you book don't. The, the you race don't. Book in and Las I Vegas. miss that. And horse racing is so cool, man. You know, they're showing them the whip and they're hitting them and, and they're opening the reins and it's when to go. The first guy who hits is in trouble. You start seeing that. And the competitive, I like horse racing. You know, people that like baseball or I like wearing the jersey. I just enjoy. Sp- Boy, and I got to see the best Pinkai shoemaker. What a colony oh, that was. Every, Eddie, Eddie everyone, D, Gary Eddie Stevens, D, Patrick Valenzuela, you know, Sandy Hawley. They were, I looked at the the program, I go, they're all Hall of Famers. I even told Chris McCarron, the only thing we did, we knew you were left handed. If they claimed a horse and gave it to you, we knew you could hit a harder left handed. And he said, Yeah, that would have been uh, fined. But then he goes, but we would have adjusted. We would have adjusted. We're certainly kindred spirits in that respect, aren't we, Tim? We love horse racing. It kind of shows uh, both in your demeanor and my demeanor. It's, it's a, a great, beautiful great sport, sport, and I wish more people knew about it, which is why I'm encouraging to bring all your acting friends out here for a day at, out at okay. Sandy Park. It would be our pleasure to host you guys, truly. Oh, that'd be a lot of Truly. Fun. You'll be you'll be the uh, the role model for them. You can give them all the losers. Believe me, they call me. They're probably <laughs> calling right now to see what I like. <laughs> race number two, we're on the main track, one mile the distance, 50 cent early pick four time. This race is for 20 thousand dollar claimers non-winners of three races lifetime unfortunately two scratches in the race scratch the two and four just leaves us with a field of three with win wagering only morning line favorite was originally scratched now the other second steve knapp horse on the bottom set to cento is the eight to five morning line favorite likely to go lower not much to choose from here but give us your thoughts on race two tim well yeah those are the two i liked before that then that leaves the five the only thing i got going a lot of people call me timbo and this why horse, is that? I don't know. It's a nickname. And this Timbo, <laughs> it's not number, like Rambo. I don't know, but number three Timbo sounds close enough to Timbo. So those are kind of I circle once in a while. I don't get too many Tim horses right. that I can guess on. So I I take a little special. If he beats me, I'd be mad because I didn't bet Timbo. But I, I went with the five also. You talked about you were in the Marines, uh, yeah, obviously, uh, in your youth days. How yeah. long did you serve for our I, country? I went in the Marines on my 18th birthday, got out of my 20th. So I was only two years, and that's why I joined the Marines. Because they give me that option. And I figure if I'm going to go to Vietnam, I'd rather be a Marine. And I did go to Vietnam, spent 13 months. And that has a lot to do with my one-man show. I actually stepped on a Claymore mine, and, and it set it. And two kids went, gee, I'm going to die. Gee, I'm going to die. And 
everybody got around me and I thought I could hear the buzzing sound. And I said, I didn't want to hear that. And I locked and loaded and one of them went running that way and one went running that way. And then the guy said, I think I could take it apart. And he dug a hole. He said, throw me your rifle. They blow a little left. And then I threw the rifle and drove to the right and nothing happened. Wow. But wow. you know, that's my life. Yeah. I have a great lucky life. And uh, I, I live life to that. I live happy all the time. Well, thank and you. Thank to being uh, uh, to do this stuff. Sure, sure. You know? That's why you're so energized. I'm an because energized you know, because, guy. Because tomorrow is guaranteed to nobody. Nobody. And money does not break happiness. It might fix some stuff, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it doesn't break happiness. On an eight race card, we begin the 20 cent rainbow pick six in race number three. The jackpot single ticket carrier over now up to $171,000. That amount plus whatever is wagered today will be yours if you're the only winning ticket in the pick six sequence. And we kick things off here in race number three, sprinting six furlongs on the main track. It's a starter optional claiming race. We've got a field of five. Number two, Cyber Viking, who's a first time gelding, is the eight to five morning line favorite, invading uh, eligible for the ship and win bonus tim talk to us about race three wow this is an interesting race it is um the three horse is my long shot in this race he should improve and his work patterns are really last two works are bullets los alamitos but he's working really sharp right now and uh i like that price on 12 to 1 uh the last race the four horse road Bellotti. He's got the best last buyer, and that was a pretty impressive race. So that's going to be my first pick, I guess, of the four. You talked about Bellotti, and as we're looking at the racing form together, Tim, you can see he earned a 92 buyer speed figure, which was his career best and certainly yeah. much higher than what he was running. People who read the sheets, whether it's Thorograph or Ragazin, tend to think that horses might bounce off a career best effort. Do you subscribe to that theory? No. I've, I hated that one. Every time I've heard that, I kept thinking, what does that mean anyway? Uh -huh. I've learned not to let it make, it make any sense. It's an excuse is all it is, really. Sure, sure. So I, I think a horse that runs like that and he comes back with a bullet work makes him sharp. Mm -hmm. I think this horse is going to be tough. Fair enough. Number three, excuse me, number four, Bilotti, is one of two runners that uh, Tim likes in race number three. Race number four begins the 50-cent late pick five. We're back on the turf course sprinting. Six and a half furlongs on the flat turf course. This race is for Calbred. Allowance optional claiming types, non-winners of one other than. Scratch the seven leaves us with a field of six. Number three, Leah's Candy from the Mark Latbarn, ridden by our leading rider, Juan Hernandez, is the five to two morning line favorite. Did you ever hang out with the jockeys? You talked about Shoemaker and You Lafayette. know, my favorite, Corey Nakatani. And he just got inducted into I'm the Hall so of Fame. I'm so proud of him. He had such a great personality. You know, Johnny Longden Invitational was a golf tournament yes. they had many years. And me and me and Nick Casado won it one year. And we, Slam dunk we, racing. We won it really easy. And other than get the awards, me and uh, Corey and, and, and Nick went out and played more holes and played for money. And Corey was knocking down the pins, man. He He's great, play. isn't he? He's, He's good. good golf. You're, you're an avid golfer as well. Yeah, I, don't, I stink now, but I used to be really good at <laughs> golf. Growing up, that's all I did. It's funny because acting is different than golf. Golf, you can't get mad, you can't get happy. Now I can get mad and happy, they pay me a lot more. And so I've had more of the energy for to be an actor than I did a golfer. Well, we talked about Juan Hernandez riding the favorite in race number four. Who do you think is going to win race four, Tim? Uh, I, I picked the three horses, my first pick. That was my first pick. But it's interesting, his last race, buyer went way down on the turf, which I, I didn't expect. Normally they go up. Mm -hmm. So that was weird. And then they, he was favored in the race, but he, only, he lacked room, and he only lost by a length. So he, he was right there anyway. So I think he's the number one choice. The next one was tough to come up with the next one. I, I said the one, but I, I don't like him anymore. I've changed my mind. <laughs> and I've gone to the long shot the six trumped yeah because brickyard ride is a tough horse and that was he ran three races before that and it turned apparently so were tough races and that was a hard race he came into that's the horse i think is going to improve on the grass tim i mentioned that hollywood park is now known as sofi stadium have you had a chance to go over there and watch any football games or Not concerts yet man With, it'll break your heart right i know i'm gonna say i remember being right there yeah. you know and God, it was a great track and there's not much memorabilia of hollywood park itself there's still lafitte Pinquet drive is which is right? one of the streets leading into sofi stadium but other than that there's not much uh, recognition wow, of hollywood such park. A, remember friday nights dollar hot tremendous dollars and track dollar of the lake and, and flowers i was sitting in the training with art sherman and, and, and van berg and tell stories all night long with those Do you remember guys. seeing Will Chamberlain there? His oh, long yeah. legs would be over the box seats into the next box as well. That's how tall of a gentleman he was. I, uh, Paul I mean, Westhead, the basketball coach, would there, be there on Friday I, I nights. Saw, so many wonderful people in that, that would come to that track. Uh, I remember one time I had a seat right by the finish line. Zanyata was running. And the energy went from here when the 16th pole, it went up another notch, and it felt like the energy pulled her into win. It was so emotionally in front of me that I had three more races. I had to go home. <laughs> you were drained, it, even though I she won. I had never seen energy. Yeah. The horse was exciting to watch anyway. But the energy being there yeah. it was so cool to see it just went, ah! 
horse won by that far. And I just went, that's, that just amazed me. It just blew me away. That's horse racing, you know. It sure is. And you it lose sure. by that far, too. And human sports can't deliver that type of energy or, oh. or emotion. Not even close, because the animals are doing it. Basically, they're doing what they were born to do, which is run at a Boy, high level. they like running. They sure do. They're so beautiful, aren't they? They sure are. Race oh. number five begins the 50 cent late pick four. Four and a half furlongs. This is the baby race. Oh, boy. Calbred maiden special weight two year olds. Two scratches. Scratch the five, as well as the program scratch of the eight. Leaves us with a field of seven. Morning line favorite, the second time starter from the Peter Miller barn. Number six, last call London, who's five to two on John White's morning line. Give us your thoughts on race five, Tim. Well, you know, the four is a stay thirsty, and so is the nine is stay thirsty, which is kind of interesting. And then smoke them. For some reason, they, they win early. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah, Terry Lovinger is promoting that. Is that right? For oh, sure. yeah, yeah. As well as stay thirsty. While. He sure has. He he's played great. basketball back in the he's day. He's a great guy, too. Thank God he's still around. All of them are still around. <laughs> so he he's interesting. So I know we I had my, I think I had other choices that I, that I chose, but I, I think I've changed because I, this is a hard race. They're all two-year-olds. Yes. You can pretty much point your finger at anybody. Doug O'Neill's got that interesting. He, he He's good with his babies. So I kind of like the – oh, gosh, I like the two and the three. Fair I'm enough. You also give a little bit of love to the seven, at least graphically. Mises Express, second-time starter well, you know from the what? Steve Knapp barn. On these races, those two-year-olds, it's important to have experience. He's got experience and got speed and got the best last buyer. How do you leave him out? Which I just made a mistake, didn't I? What, That's one of my top picks. What type of a player are you from a wagering standpoint, Tim? Are you, you talked about Pick how fours and fives and no, I don't. So play you got away from the show wagering and the win wagering. Now you're going. Now, yeah, yeah. Now you're going for the juggler. I that didn't make any really money, you know. <laughs> now you're going for the juggler. You're trying to battle over the win a lot. I'm the kind of guy that can last all day long, and that last race is either going to make me some money or make a little, you know. Sure. I know how to cover well. You have sure. to in this in this game. Yeah. And not be greedy. It's hard when you pick fours. People want to win and get that money right away. You, you can bet two horses in each race. It's only eight dollars. Right. And you can have a really lot of fun. Hundred percent. And then if you don't have any money, go to Woodbine. You got twenty percent shot. Twenty <laughs> twenty cent. Pick everything. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hit a pick five there for 40 cents and I hit it for twice. Single, 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 single. And I had two. They scratched mine and went to the favorite and I hit it for 40 cents. I hit it twice. You can't say that. You can't do that in Vegas. <laughs> no. You get laughed off the You'll table. Right if you one, put up 40 one hand cents. to blackjack is 25 bucks. You're gone. <laughs> <laughs> race, race number six is our feature race on the card. It's the Desert Coat Stakes. We're coming down the hillside turf course, six and a half furlongs of the distance, $100,000 of the purse. It's for three-year-olds, and there's a field of six. The morning line favorite, number two, first piece, who won the John Shear is the eight to five, uh, excuse me, eight to five morning line favorite. Four of these six runners exit that aforementioned John Shear race wow. back on April 9th. Let's take a look at that replay of the John Shear race for all four runners and listen to Frank Miramonti describe the action. And they're off. Smooth start for the favorite conclude. Holatic is a little bit quicker down the hill. And Nullabor is also flashing plenty of speed second. Now moving into third is conclude. Ryder just took a peek back to see first piece moving through in the red colors, taking that third spot. Behind them, Mark's hip is having some difficulty. Six lengths off the lead. It's a gap of three to Mas Rapido, Fleet feet and Valiancer is at the back of the field less than a half mile to go and it's Halatic the boss showing the way over Nullabor in second Nullabor comes to engage once again two more lengths first piece conclude in the orange colors moves up very willingly and smoothly and here comes conclude after the new leader Nullabor with a quarter of a mile to go Nullabor in between horses Halatic fighting on they're joined three wide by conclude at the top of the stretch First piece in the red colors coming through. They're a furlong from the finish. First piece slips through. And on the outside, here's Mas Rapido. And now it's first piece. Mas Rapido disputing it from the back. Valiants are trying to get a piece. First piece in front by a length. And what a clinic ride from Mike Smith. First piece wins the John Shear. Mas Rapido was second. Valiants are third. Fourth win. Tim, as we saw, first piece had the dream rail trip and got up for the victory, and Mas Rapido was a good second while going wide. Since that race, Mas Rapido came back for Bob Hess to win a race on the flat turf mm. course. It looks like those are the two major contenders, but as I mentioned, four of these six runners in today's race exit that particular race. We saw the replay. Who do you like and why? You know, I was in London. I went to Kempton Racetrack with my buddy Michael Bean, and I took him, and we went to two trains, and we, and we didn't know. They're jumping over hurdles and stuff. <laughs> with the forums there, if a horse beats another horse, they don't even show the other horses. Correct. Their racing form is completely different going, than ours. Well, that must be really important. So I've made that a handicapping thing, and I think since first piece already beat Mass Rapido, I'm going to stay him and try to 
go my other course is conclude the full horse with Hernandez on him. If he's got that 96 buyer and the five and a half furlong that really looks powerful, he might go to the front and never stop. We saw conclude loom up in that replay and then kind of flatten out. But as you mentioned, Juan Hernandez elects to ride back and is the second choice in the wagering. Question for you, you mentioned, and I was going to act, actually ask you, Tim, with your acting career, you've traveled all around the country and all around the world. What other tracks have you been to besides Kempton and England? Like, give uh, us an example. Leah was a great track. Unbelievable. One of my favorites. And it was a bird sanctuary. And yes. what they did is actually Hollywood Park got their flamingos from that track. Yes. And I was living there at the time, and we actually shot the movie The Champ there. You know, uh, and we all had to wear pink. And I mean, it was a beautiful track. Yeah, spiral staircases. Oh, it was just beautiful. It, it, they had, that's the first time I ever saw yearlings run. They came straight. They were all uh -huh. weaving. But, and it's too bad that track's not there any longer. Goldstream's really nice. Yeah, yeah. Been there uh, at, what was the, the old people places? <laughs> the, you know, the rain, it rained every day. Calder. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Uh, yes, and, yes. Not too far from fun, Goldstream, ironically. Fun places. I've uh, been to Exarbon, Turk Paradise, you know, all the California. I've never been up north. I've always wanted to go to Golden Gate. You should. Golden Gate is spectacular. Is You'd enjoy it. Yeah. And, then, and that area right over there by Berkeley is fantastic from a from an after racist standpoint. Wow. Race number seven. We're on the main track. It's one mile as the distance. And of course, on an eight race card, uh, the last two races here with the last two races at Golden Gate comprise the one dollar golden hour pick four. higher minimum. Lower takeout means better payouts. And we kick that bet, that bet off in race number seven with twelve thousand thousand five hundred dollar claimers a field of six number two claim of passion first off the claim for trainer ron ellis is the nine to five morning line favorite to give you an idea of the things we can find out through our friends at xbtv uh, xbtv.com uh, tim claim of passion before he got claimed back on february 5th back on january 29th was working heads up with a very talented bob baffert runner by the name of fun to dream if that if those morning workouts can translate to afternoon success claim of passion could be tough if he runs back to that work Workout that I referred to, but having well, said all that, and I tip my hand of who I like, who do you like? That's I didn't even. That's amazing what you said. All that. My first pick was uh, claim a passion. Then for a different reason, Ron Ellis used to be a big trainer. He used to have a lot of horses. Yes, some really great horses. Remember Mr. and Mrs. Wygod? Um, and a great a great trainer. And also doesn't have that many anymore. That I'm noticing. And when he claims a horse now. It's almost like Bill Spar, man. I used to learn that when he claims a horse, you better bet the next time out, right? Don't be silly. Don't bet against Billy. Used to be the motto in the paddock. You know what I'm talking about, of course. And those are certain things as a handicapper that you gotta you gotta sure. put in there. So I really liked it too because of that. Uh, the next one that it's it's a it's dropping is the five. He's dropping uh, big time to to twelve and. Uh, scary. Those two are the ones I like, and I think the four is capable. They, but they, I think the two, I'm going to single him. They took next revolt for 20000 As you mentioned now, Tim, they dropped down to twelve five. That's never a very positive no. sign, but nevertheless, the drop in class, we know you like cl class risers rather than class droppers. But that, and I actually completely agree with you, Tim, and here's the reason why. It shows confidence from the from the owners and the trainer's standpoint. They're raising the horse up in class. Right. They're all, they're telling you verbal, non-verbally through the racing form, hey, we like this horse. Generally speaking, when they drop a horse down in class non-verbally they're telling you we don't like this horse right or they're playing some kind of game and how about my horse in the first race just went from maiden right into grade ones yes. those are called high hopes they got a lot of high hopes for their horse and i see that one of my favorite things at hollywood park was i saw this box seat never used ever next to me one friday night about eight guys and girls in prom outfits what was the number again? I went, they know something. I got behind them and they said seven. I said seven to win. And they're in the winner's circle. And that's handicapping. You got to handicap the people. You got to handicap the people. We've done that in the paddock, right? If people are dressed up like you, you just know what mentioned, I'm talking of about. course, they usually mean business. They're, what are they doing here? If they show up in a Hawaiian shirt, you basically <laughs> throw them right out, right? Uh, we close out the day and we close out the week in race number eight. Keep in mind, live racing resumes on Friday. And this coming weekend is Memorial Day weekend. That means we've got a four-day race week uh, lined up for you, including Memorial Day Monday, where we'll run the grade one Shoemaker Mile, which ironically used to be run over at Hollywood Park. That's a Breeders' Cup win in your in race. On Friday, we've got eight races in store with a one o'clock p.m. Uh, Pacific time first post. But we close out the uh, the day and the week in race number eight, offering $5 Golden Hour Daily Double Wagering, linking our last race with the last race at Golden Gain. And we're sprinting six furlongs in the turf course, Phillies and Mirrors. It's a straight old-fashioned allowance race. Two scratches, scratch to three and seven, leaves us with a field of seven. Number two, stressed, the second morning line uh, favorite for the trainer, Peter Ertenbarn, is the three-to-one morning line favorite. This is a good race to close it out, Tim. It is, you know, and this is the one you want to hit because it's the last leg of your pick four. It's the last leg to get out and... 
I, he was my first pick, too. I guess I'm going with everybody else. I, I like his speed. He's the best last buyer. He's got a good jock. The long shot here I have is the five. I think he could be a long shot in this race. Uh, his numbers are decent, you know, and he needed that last race. One of two in here trained by Carla Gaines, including one of the favorites, number six, Doris May. You give any sort of love to Doris May, or the buyer speed figure is a little too well, low for like liking? Now I better take a look, because I haven't marked her that she was scratched. That's not good. Exactly. Oh, she's got speed, too. So I, I don't like two speed horses. They they burn each other sometimes, and I hate when I two horses are... The guy's third, just waiting for him to get tired, you know. Tim, you used to live in Los. Uh, you used to live in Los Angeles, of course, going to Hollywood Park as we've been reminiscing. But now you live in Las Vegas. Yeah. What are you doing from a career standpoint? What do you got cooking as far oh, as you know things you're doing? Finished a film called Christ Rising. That's a uh, great. I'm 32 minutes in the movie. Beginning, middle, and What type and of end. role do you play, and what's it all uh, about? I'm a mercenary, and uh, I, I end up dying really cool, and then Jesus heals me. It's I, I did a, die real cool. I, I mean, I, I, the hands and shaking, and I mean, I was really dying <laughs> and quivering. It was a good death. <laughs> <laughs> How long did you have to practice and rehearse for? You know, it's funny. It's, it's funny. It, I teach acting, so it's interesting. I have to teach how to die, and it's, it's never nobody ever taught me that. But you know, I don't think anybody will. I had a knife in me one time, and the camera was right here, Adrian Brody, and so that's the pearl handle one I gave for his birthday when Sigourney, you know. And I noticed when I was dead that I was breathing, my hand was moving up and down. So I went, I have to not breathe. <laughs> and he went, Cut. You can breathe now, Tim. You know who the director was? No idea. William Friedkin, who did The Exorcist. Sure. 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 That's what he said. I thought he's watching me not breathe. That's a good director. Those of us who live in Southern California interact with a lot of different actors, whether it's at the supermarket or at a baseball game or whatever it might be. But what do you find in terms of them being like real life people? In other words, the characters they play mm. might be very different from their real personality. Oh gosh, it, it's uh, our business is weird. They're either the really coolest guys or they don't want to be around them. They're, they're, there's not in between. I met some of the greatest real people as actors, and then there's uh, some that think they're really something, you know. We're just, that's our occupation. We're no better than anybody else. It's not an easy occupation. It's very competitive. It's a lot who you know. There's a lot more talented people out there than me, but, uh, you know, I, I have some sort of talent and somehow somebody saw it and it keeps on going. I, and I love doing it. I've never looked at a role thinking, I wonder how much money I'm going to get. It's, I can't wait to play that role. You said you teach acting. How would people get in touch with you if they want to learn how to be an actor? Oh, wow. You got a website? You got I a, do have a website, timcolsaray.com. Is that it? I yeah, think that's yeah, it. Yeah. That's it. It's as easy as your name. Yeah, that's an easy one. And uh, gosh, thank you so much for having me on here. I was, this has been a, a dream come true for me. And this isn't too shabby of a studio. You walked in for the awesome. first time, and it kind of rivals a lot like Fox Sports and other networks have. This is a, this is a legitimate this is studio. Under Santa Anita Racetrack, <laughs> you just don't see that in your mind, and it's it's big. It's a lot bigger than this room. It's beautiful. <laughs> And you're great. You do such a great job. I'm really impressed by your work. Well, I'm so happy that we developed a friendship after seeing each other all those years yeah. over at Hollywood Park, Tim. It's been a pleasure having you today on the set. I know all the viewers enjoyed all the stories you had to share with them. And, you know, we couldn't close out the seminar without you saying the famous two words that you're that you're mostly famous for. Get some! <laughs> Winners, baby! <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the seminar, everybody. Next voice you hear will be track announcer Frank Miramont updating us with any late program changes. Enjoy the day and good luck. Good luck! luck.